When I was about one years old, my father was killed. After his passing, my mom just really could not deal with the pain of losing her husband. I kind of had to step up and be the head of the household at a very young age, five or six years old, taking care of my sister, looking after my grandparents, going from cottage to cottage and begging for food because I was too young to work at that time. I was mostly concerned with my sister Tanya though. She was my main priority. Not having very much, we still had each other. So while I was taking care of Tanya, you know, my mom was coming in and out of the household. And when one day she showed up and she was pregnant with my youngest sister, Ilona. My mother, in her drunk state, fed Ilona alcohol instead of milk. When Ilona passed away, I decided that Tanya and I would run away in search of a new life. We got on the bus and we left. We eventually got hungry. And so we started collecting empty bottles to trade those in for money and then use that money to buy food. And so as we were doing that, the clerk called the police. So that's when the police came by, picked us up, and first took us to the police station to question us. They decided to take us to a detention center. My mom was notified where we were. They asked her, they said, do you want your children? And she said, no, I don't want them. When my mother's rights were taken away, Tanya's biological father was notified. Sorry. I remember Tanya's father telling me, I'm taking Tanya home with me, but I don't want you because you're not my daughter. All I could feel was heartbreak, but I knew that I had to let her go. After losing Tanya, I didn't think about the future. It didn't matter anymore. I just remember on that day feeling very abandoned. No one cared about me. After about a year at the detention center, I was transferred to an orphanage. Because I felt so empty, I started praying on my own. Without even knowing God, I was crying out to him, asking him to give me a sign that everything was going to be okay. There is a purpose for me. Every night I would pray. And that is when Operation Christmas Child came to our orphanage. And I'm crying again, I'm so sorry. You're doing, you're doing awesome. This is the day that I received my Operation Christmas Child shoebox. Once I opened it, there were so many different things in there. But I remember my favorite item was a yellow yo-yo. To me, that yo-yo represented hope. It was an answer to my prayer. In that moment, I knew that this was the sign that God was sending me, that you are not alone. You are not an orphan, you are my daughter. And that's what I knew, that God is real and that he is with me. The orphanage sponsored a choir trip to United States for two weeks. Because I was on that choir, I had the opportunity to travel to United States. And during the second week, I was hosted by a family in Virginia. We were at an event in the morning and uh, we went to go out to lunch and Elizabeth had fallen asleep in the back of the van and I looked back at Elizabeth and I heard, this is your daughter. That was supernatural for me. I, it was just, you know, I, I knew that the spirit had spoken to me at that point. So I was fortunate enough to take a photo of that. <laughs> I, in fact, still carry that with me today when I knew she was my daughter. They sat me down and they asked me if I wanted to be adopted. I said, yeah, duh, <laughs> of course. They all flew out to Ukraine together to bring me home as a family. And this was the moment right before the plane touched on U.S. soil. And that was the moment that I officially became a U.S. citizen. It was a special moment. After my adoption, I had told my parents about this amazing gift that I had received at the orphanage and how much hope it brought me and what it meant to me. And we decided to pack as a family. My mom said, why don't we pack two shoe boxes or maybe three? And I said, no, we're gonna pack a hundred. Over the years as a family, we have packed over 8,000 shoe boxes. 
Operation Christmas Child is a part of my life. So anywhere I go, I always bring it with me. Starting as a family packing shoe boxes, going to college and getting people involved there, going to grad school and having my friends at grad school get involved and professors get involved, people at my gym. Anywhere I go, I'm always gonna take it with me. It was the first seed that was planted in my heart. The shoebox was a seed.